Hi guys, uh, my name is Tom Antos and in this video I want to show you my ATEM Mini uh, live video streaming uh, and live video switching setup uh, that, I, that I use and sort of explain to you step by step how you can use the ATEM Mini and also how you can use the software uh, that, that comes you know, with the ATEM Mini uh, to do all kinds of really cool things uh, in case you do want to do any kind of live video switching or live video streaming. Uh, now, I did do a video before showing the ATEM Mini, but in that previous video I showed it sort of how I use it just for the video aspect of it, not any of the audio parts, uh, because that was for my sort of a typical uh, podcast setup where I usually have a guest in, in my studio and I interview them live. So then in that case I only use the ATEM Mini uh, just to be able to switch between the cameras. Uh, but but otherwise all the audio stuff was actually done on, on a completely separate device. So right now everything is actually being done here through the ATEM Mini, including the audio. So I have my uh, Rode NTG5 microphone like right there, uh, and it's being fed through my camera. In this case, is the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro, and the audio basically goes through that camera, including you know, and then the audio, including the. The, the video obviously goes here uh, to my ATEM Mini, which in this case it's on uh, channel 3. So you'll notice here I have the, 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 you know, the channel 3 or number 3 here is, is, uh, is red, which means that I'm basically right now showing this, uh, this is the feed. Now uh, here also you guys will notice I have uh, um, sort of my other two devices that I'm using. So in this case I'm using the Ninja Inferno from Atomos. And that's simply, you know, you could use any monitor um, if you wanted to, or you, I, you don't even need a monitor. But in this case, I'm using this monitor because uh, it's kind of nice for me when I'm, for example, talking to my main camera. I can just quickly glance and make sure that, you know, I'm actually looking at the right camera, for example, because I can see whatever the ATEM Mini is outputting. Uh, and, and I can see it here, so I can see what angle I'm in. Like, for example, if I were to, you know, switch some of, some of these angles, then again, I can see that, let's see, right now with some close-up of, of, of my ATEM Mini here. Um, plus, I'm actually using the Ninja Inferno to record uh, on, onto this, basically, all my whole video output. So, whatever I'm doing during my live streaming setup, I'm using this actually to record it. Uh, and that's kind of like, the, the, I would say, the biggest difference between the ATEM Mini and then the, the latest one that came out, which is the ATEM Mini Pro. ATEM Mini Pro, I mean, there's a few other differences, but the biggest one is that it allows you to record directly to like a USB drive. Uh, with the ATEM Mini, you can't directly record within it, but you have the HDMI out, so you can plug it into an external recorder, like, you know, uh, whether it's a Blackmagic Video Assist. In this case, I'm using the Atomos Ninja Inferno, and you can record there. Uh, now, the laptop kind of comes in handy when you want to do sort of some of the other advanced features or, or, or you know, a lot of other little settings that you want to adjust that you can't really do directly on the ATEM Mini simply because there's just not enough space for all the buttons. So in here you have just a lot more control. Uh, and so if, let me kind of just show you quickly uh, sort of the, the layout. So you, it comes with the software, well, you, or you're going to install the software when you get the ATEM Mini. And it's the ATEM uh, software control. It also comes with um, uh, the ATEM setup, and in this case, you basically would you click in here. You have your IP address, things like that. You can change. You have your um, your basically panel preferences. So you have uh, switching mode. You can have it to program preview or cut pass. And the program preview basically just means that when you press on the on one of the buttons, it doesn't directly switch. It kind of just arms and uh, arms basically one of the the cameras or one of the video feeds. And then only once you press cut or auto, well, auto would be for your transition, then it would cut to it. And the, I usually use the cut pass simply because I'm usually operating it myself, so I don't want to have to press once and then fumble and look for something else. So I just kind of have my fingers here on these uh, four buttons for the four different video inputs. And I can just switch li quickly switch between all of them by just, you know, tapping it, right? So I just, I don't, I don't have to basically do this and then do that. Now, if I wanted to, I can also do it with transitions because I can just put my auto here button. And now when I click, you'll notice it does the, the transitions nicely. So in this case, it's set up just to do a fade. Uh, some of the other things you can do up here is, uh, like I said, you have fade to black, meaning just cuts to black. Uh, you also have for the actual transitions, you can change the duration of it. So right now it's half a second. You can do one second, for example. 
or you can do let's say two seconds if you're going to be very slow dissolve from one angle to the other uh, and, and again you can do all of that stuff and actually a lot more uh, in the ATEM mini software um, basically so it gives you basically more control over all of those things here we have some of these other effects that you can do again I'll show you more once we're in the ATEM mini because I just prefer to do these things there uh, you have a key because you can actually do a chroma key like if I had a green screen set up behind me you can uh, in real time basically key it out and you can put whatever video or still photo image uh, as a background be be behind you you also have a picture um, basically picture and picture e effect what that does is if I click on it you'll notice right now I have it set up to my camera one which is a close-up of, of um, you know th this camera here over my, over my shoulder uh, and then here if I switch here and I again turn on the picture to the picture and in this case again you can see I, I have my other uh, angle uh, but overlaid now over the part where I'm talking so in case you have another angle you can do that and, and again this is all fully customizable but to adjust for example like the size of it exact position all that stuff you would have to do that in the ATEM mini because if I were to switch now if I were to press any of these buttons right now like basically here on the on the actual uh, keyboard the, the only difference really is that, like if you look at it, I have these four buttons and I, I, can, I can do picture and picture, but the second I press on these, it will just default to its, uh, basically to its standard setting or its standard size and, 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 and the location of, uh, of the picture and picture. So right now, I usually like to have it a bit bigger, like you guys can see right now, but uh, here, let me maybe switch to another angle. And now let's say I press here, let's say to be on the bottom left corner, you'll notice now it gets much smaller. Um, and so it just doesn't look as good, I don't think it's as visible. But you know, I can switch to the, the bottom right corner, bottom, the top right and left. And that's pretty much all you have up here. So that's why I, I find that a lot of these things I prefer to do in the ATEM uh, mini software. Uh, some of the other things that you have up here, you have a still image that you can cut to. So in this case I actually have a lower thirds graphic, so it doesn't make sense for me to cut there, so I'll show you guys that in a bit. You have a black, basically you just want to cut to black for whatever reason, uh, you can do that. And, and then you have here buttons basically for, you know, like I said, the four different video inputs. Uh, and in this case I only have three cameras. Uh, and then you also have uh, above it is basically the audio follows video button, so meaning if you want to use audio from one of these cameras, you would click that and it would always basically, whenever you switch to that video source, it would use the audio from that camera, whatever camera it is that you're using. Um, you can have you know reset button for resetting all the settings and you have little arrows up and down so you can adjust the volume on each of these basically thing, uh, video inputs. So these buttons here above each of these video inputs is, are basically just for the audio. And then these here four uh, are for the two mic inputs that you can do. So the ATEM Mini has a three and a half millimeter uh, input jacks that you can in input, let's say a lav microphone or something like that. And then you can also adjust the volume of it and then turn it on and off, uh, pretty straightforward. Other than that, you have four HDMI inputs here on the back of the ATEM Mini. Uh, and then you have one HDMI output, which in this case, again, like I said, it goes to my uh, Atomos here Inferno uh, or yeah, Ninja Inferno to record it. And then you have a USB-C cable, and that's for sending the, the live streaming, or basically the video signal out. And so that's plugged into my laptop, so that I can now stream this, you know, whether basically I can connect to YouTube or Facebook, and I can just directly stream it there. Or usually the way I do it is I actually have it here, um, basically switching here to my camera. Or actually, in my case, I usually end up using the OBS software because I prefer it and I can do some other cool things with it. So when I'm streaming, I kind of use that and then through that software, I, I send out my video signal. And then the, the one more thing that you have up here is you have an Ethernet connection here on the back, which is again, kind of allows you to do a, it's pretty much the same thing as the USB-C allows you to do. Uh, and, uh, and that's pretty much it. There's not, nothing else there. Um, so, like I said, it's a cool little device, the ATEM Mini, because it's so small, light, easy to travel with, and, and you can use it to do some really cool stuff. But, like I said, you're probably always going to have it paired with uh, at least a laptop. But if you want to have, I think, the, the even better kind of you know, capability, then I would say get an external uh, if monitor slash recorder so that you can actually record your whole output. So, let's say if you're live streaming and you're 
you know, you lose your internet connection for whatever reason and, and something happens, you, you're at least always recording your whole session that you're doing so that worst case scenario, you can later on upload it to YouTube or whatever it is uh, so people can still see that, uh, how the whole live stream went. Uh, anyways, here now, uh, going back to the software. So in the Atom Mini setup, that's like a little software that lets you kind of change some of the settings. Uh, for me, when it comes to the like the basic things, which is to switch camera angles, I usually do that by switching the, you know, basically pressing the buttons because it's easy for me to do whether I'm doing a podcast with somebody or doing a video like this. I can very easily say like, cut to my hands now, cut to here my main camera, and then you know cut to my little side angle that I have. So it's easy for me to do that uh, just by, you know, the kind of I can just have my fingers under and I can remember where everything is. Now, if you want to do some of the advanced things, then that's when the ATEM Mini software is really going to come in handy. So, for example, what can you do here? Well, you can obviously switch the different views. So you have, again, your four different video inputs. So uh, you'll notice right now I'm on video input three. So it says here camera three. Uh, if I go to switch to camera one, you'll see what it does, does there. It switches there. Uh, now you'll notice that this thing also moves. That's because I have my transition now turned on. So you'll notice here there's a transition style. So I can do a mix and I, I can actually, uh, for example, I can arm now, I can, I can go to preview and let's say I want to go from camera one uh, to camera, let's say two or camera, let's say three, which is my, my, my view, uh, kind of my, or actually, yeah, let's go to my side camera here. Now what I can do is, since I have a mix, which is basically like a dissolve, if I slide this slider, you'll notice what's happening here is it's basically kind of like right now, right in the middle of I leave it, then it's kind of 50% showing that, you know, camera one and it's 50% showing camera two, like you can see up here. But I can this way manually literally pull this and do like a like a dissolve. So that's pretty kind of cool, I think, uh, so that you, ha you have that kind of control. And then, like I said, I can keep on going back and forth and I can even, you know, just play around with it. I don't know, DJ with it. <laughs> Uh, so that's one one of the cool things that you can do with this that you can't do directly on the ATEM Mini. Um, you can do dip, for example, you can change the transition style. So you have mix, which is like a dissolve. Dip is uh, basically, if I were to here right now, do auto button, you'll notice it kind of dips to a color, right? So in this case, it's a white color. Um, and then, for example, uh, I can go and change it to, let's say, a wipe. So again, if I click on it, you'll see it does this wipe transition. And then I can also do, um, here is this uh, DVE, I forgot exactly what that stands for, but basically as you can see, it kind of slides in the other video source. Now you can change these settings, like for example, for the dip, you can change the color of the light, right? Or, or that, that solid color, you can change the, during the wipe, what kind of a wipe it does, like you can change all these things by going further in here and adjusting all these settings. Um, if here, I'm just kind of quickly going back, preview is, like I said, just you're arming sort of your next channel that you're going to be, your video, just basically signal that you're going to be cutting to or, or dissolving to. Um, you also have the black, right, that you can you can switch to. You have, for example, also the color one and two, which are the basically solid colors that you can put in here um, into the ATEM software. Uh, and then you have also your media player one. Uh, so you can have one media player, and I'll explain kind of how that works in a second. Then here you also have your kind of, uh, it's called, you know, what is it, next transition. Uh, and you can have basically different things. So you can have, for example, like your background, you can do your keying, chroma keying, all that stuff. And, and you notice if I click on right now the auto, uh, and it says now it's on air, and there was a transition here, it said it's one second. Well, basically what that did is now if I switch even to my angle here, and by the way, right now, I, basically, instead of cutting, I did the auto on the transition, but I'm, I'm I basically, put, you know, I put it in there to the DVE uh, transition. So because of that, I did that cheesy slide. <laughs> uh, but anyways, right now, you'll notice I can switch my different angles and I have my lower third graphic in there. And now again, by clicking here, the auto, uh, I can basically dissolve that out. And it basically takes about a second for it to do because it's here's the the set and the duration. So you can adjust this, make it faster or slower. Now, if I wanted to, I could just simply cut and actually like just make it, you know, basically make that lower third graphic appear like this and disappear just by turning it on, on and off. And tie just simply means that you can tie it to one of the angles, basically to one of your camera program outputs. Um, now, if, how can you change, for example, these graphics? So let's say I'll switch right now, and you'll notice here again. 
uh, I have my little lower third graphic. Well, you can actually change that by going into the media. So in the media, you can actually change the different graphics. So you can see right now my media player, and you can only have one media player. Um, that's why, for example, if you get some of the you know, more professional ATEM mini switchers from Blackmagic, then you'll be able to have more of these things and that you can load in. But with this one, you're limited to only one. So you can, for example, load in one, but you can have a whole bunch of other ones sort of ready. So let's say if I don't want to have this, or let's say if you have like a guest and uh, and you want to have like a graphic prepared for your guests, right? So their name and their whatever website and things like that. You can have all of these prepared. You can load in up to 20 into the, the ATEM Mini, uh, basically, software control. And then I can uh, just grab it here, quickly drag it, and you'll notice now my lower third graphic automatically updated, right? Or, for example, it can be, you know, like a graphic that covers the whole screen, like in this case, this one you see. Uh, so that's how you can easily kind of drag and drop it and change it. Now, usually you're not going to be just kind of switching them live like that. You're going to go, again, turn it off, right? So, for example, in this case, I have it to just dissolve out. And then you can go quickly, you know, or, or let's say if you have somebody actually operating this while, let's say, a, a live stream is going on. You could have another person doing this, and then they can basically switch quickly out the graphic, go back here to the switcher, and then click auto, and then you basically now nicely fade into your other graphic that you want to fade in and out. So that's basically how this works. Going back to the transition styles, here's also how you can also change the, uh, like I said, I, I can right now arm, let's say, camera one, when I go click auto, you'll notice it changes to that. Right now it's sent to the DVE, so I'll change it, let's say, to just dissolve. So I can dissolve, and then in here I can change the speed of it. So like I said, on the ATEM Mini you have presets for half a second, one second, two seconds. And when I click that, you'll notice it changes here too. So right, you know, one and a half seconds, one second, half a second. But you can also manually go in here and you can put whatever number you want. So you can, you know, kind of further, again, adjust it. Uh, you have more control than you, you, you'll ever have, like, directly on the ATEM Mini. And that's basically how this whole page works, right? Now, here's some of these other kind of settings. So you have palettes. So you have your color generators. So that, those are the things that basically, like, like I said, you can cut here to your four different uh, camera inputs. Or you can cut to, uh, for example, your black, just a black screen. Uh, you can cut actually to uh, bars. Uh, and then you can also cut to your media player one, which is your graphics. So let's say if I go to my media player one, and then now quickly, let's say I want to, you know, load in this little graphic. I can go in here and I can press media player one, and you'll notice that's actually now outputting uh, here on on the, you know, basically on my main output, uh, or, or basically that that's what I would be streaming right now. And uh, now I can again change those graphics by going to my media up here at tab. And just drag and dropping whatever you know graphic that I want. Um, so that's that's one of the things that you can do. And you can also switch, by the way, to uh, the the pictures right here. Uh, basically, by by going like let's say if I cut here to this angle of the ATEM Mini, and you'll notice here, for example, I can go and I have a still, and I have the black buttons here. So still is basically the media player one, the, the whatever graphic you, you you load in there. So if I click that, you'll notice again it cuts cuts to that. Now I can also dissolve to that, so you know I can do my transitions, right? So this basically acts like another video source, kind of. You, you can think of it in those terms, um, and that's basically what this is. And the colors, like I said, you have color one and color two. You can adjust those here. So you see, you have color one, color two, and you can make it you know, whatever it is that you want to make it. So you can adjust these, and let's say I don't make this kind of turquoise color. And so if I wanted to, I could cut to this. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, sometimes I don't know. Maybe you're gonna have a lower third graphic displayed over this or, or or something else that's up to you or maybe let's see if you're doing a chroma key and then maybe you want to just have like a solid color that, you know behind you you can you can use it for all kinds of things so that's up to you uh, and then the same thing is for example if you go uh, if you want to do for example like some of the other transitions like for example switching from mix to dip like i said you can dip into the the, the, the different colors and you can actually change the color of those uh, of the dip. So, for example, if I go here to transitions, so here in my palette, and I go to dip, you'll notice that I can also adjust the rate at which is, this is happening, that dip, and I can change the, the dip source. So I can basically say color one, color two, or I could even go and, and play, for example, dip to media player one. So now if I go and do auto, you'll notice it will switch to my, my little graphic that I loaded and very quickly there. So you, that's how you can kind of think. Or let's say if I wanted to dip to that turquoise color, then I would go 
a color too. And then again, I'll go here, dip. And you see, that's, that's the kind of stuff that you can do. If you go, for example, to wipe, you can see wipe, you also have the, all the different settings for what kind of a wipe you can do. As you can see, you can do all kinds of wipes. So you can go, go let's say, top and bottom, that kind of stuff. So now, if I, uh, let me, let's see, cut to camera one, you'll notice here, I can do that little wipe like that from top and bottom. There, you can see, I can reverse it. So now it's going the other direction. I can also, again, change the, the duration of it. So that's very easy. Uh, so I'll change it to two seconds. So you can see it's going slowly now. I can also go uh, if I want to, and in this case, I'm gonna go maybe here, uh, the softness. So I can change the softness, so right? Like you could see it's, it's kind of very soft, the, the border, right? I can make it, set it to zero, and now it's gonna be this kind of a hard line, right? As it's switching from one angle to the other. Um, the width, you can have like a border width, so, and then again, you can choose the color. So let's say I want to have that turquoise color, so color two. And then now if I go and my, do my transition, you'll notice it just has this kind of a color line there. And I can even soften that too, if I wanted to. So you can do all kinds of things. Again, <laughs> uh, you can really sit in here and tweak a lot of these settings, but that's basically what that does. And then, you know, you can easily switch to another, let's say going from one corner to another, or, you know, doing these kind of, what I would say, kind of more cheesy transitions. But if you wanted to, whatever, for whatever reason, you have these. And in your DVE settings, you can, as you can see, you can have it again going from different directions. So let's say I wanted to go, let's say again from top to bottom. So I'm going to go from my main camera here to close up of the ATEM Mini. So if I do the switch, you can see basically it just slides that out like that, right? And you can again adjust the, the rate of it. You can you know, change the the, the the like the direction of it here and like this. Uh, so you, you can play around with all these things. Now, some of the other cool things you can do is you can enable here the effects. And in effects, you can, for example, go to Media Player One, again, as your uh, fill source. Or you can be any of the other things, whether one of the other cameras or colors or you know, the solid colors that you have. Let's say right now I'm going to drag and drop my big sort of Tom Atlas Films here graphic. Uh, if I use that, and that's basically saying so the fill source is going to be Media Player One. The key, the key for it is also Media Player One. And now if I do this, you'll notice what's happening. So it's kind of like that graphic goes by, right? For me, it's kind of a corny thing, but you could have like, let's say, I don't know, some kind of a graphic that you do and then it kind of dissolves one, one shot to the other. So you have that capability. You can even do up here with the DVE, you can switch from not just doing a, let's say, a push from the corner or things like that, but you can actually go and, and also do, let's say, a squeeze. I don't know, let's say squeeze it to the left side. So you can do all of these things basically using the hardware, right? But like I said, to access all of these settings, you still need a laptop. So just, just keep that in mind. Um, but that's kind of where, where this software basically kind of, again, opens up all these possibilities that, uh, that the ATEM Mini has. Uh, it, you know, kind of lets you, lets you adjust all of these settings, kind of fine-tune this, fine -tune this all. So anyways, right now we're going to switch the transition back to uh, just a dissolve, which is something that I use myself mostly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go also the downstream key. So uh, the downstream key uh, here, I can, for example, enable again, uh, if, uh, let's say the media player one and things like that. And that's for the basically the here downstream key one, like I showed you. So that's, you know, like right now I have that big graphic. So if I enable it, you'll notice it's just kind of going to sit there and cover my face. So most likely I would want to go and probably lo load in my lower thirds. Uh, kind of thing, their bumper. Uh, and then in here though is how you can change it. So you can have that, you can have a color, but you can use, for example, like you can use uh, my, let's say, turquoise color, uh, but you know, I can use a different key, right? Like let's say if I were to use the uh, this graphic, then you see it would be basically take the shape because it would use the alpha or the key from that graphic, right? So that's how you can kind of play around with these things. Um, so again, I'm going to, you know, go this back to Media Player 1, and I'm going to use that as my lower thirds. You can mask it, meaning you can kind of, like, let's see, cut off the top and the bottom and things like that. Uh, so let's see, the right side. Let's see, I can, like, cut it off. Let's say I don't want it to be like that. So those are all kinds of things that you can do. Um, uh, you can also add a pre-multiply key. In this case, this would just look bad, but... In case you had a graphic that was like basically over black, and this in, in here I was actually loading uh, PNG files, which are just have a transparency built in, so you don't need a pre-multiplied key in there. But those are the kind of things you can invert the key, obviously, uh, all kinds of things like that that you can do. Um, 
And then uh, the, the last thing you have here is the fade to black, which again you can pretty much only adjust the the, the rate or the speed at, at which is it's, you know the fade to black is going to happen. So that's basically what you have here in your palettes. The the upstream key, by the way, is for your your chroma. Like so, for example, if you're going to be doing chroma and you're going to have like let's say like a, like a blue or green green screen behind you. That's where you would kind of go in there and adjust these settings. I can't show them to you right now because I don't have a green screen with me. Uh, but it's pretty straightforward. So you pick your color, your sample and all that stuff and then you adjust it and, and it does a pretty good job for basically creating a real-time mask. Uh, so then you can adjust the, 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 the mask, the keys, all that kind of stuff. You can again further adjust it in there. You can adjust your Luma key. So let's say if you wanted to, I don't know, key out like some of these really bright areas or the dark areas maybe in my shot. You could do that too, so you, you can in that do it in those kinds of things. And then you have other also things that you can do like patterns and stuff. That, um, so you know, there's all kinds of here things that you that you can use. Uh, but I'm gonna let that leave that for you guys to play around because, like I said, there's a lot of settings. Uh, going back to the media player, which was basically the, this tab, all these settings, right, that you had. So in the media player, you can again uh, change the different graphics, right, that you have. So you can also in here quickly change them. Now the, the thing that you have to be aware of is that with the ATEM Mini you cannot load in actual video basically files for your media player. It can only be still images, so JPEGs, PNG, that, those kind of files. If you had some of the other ATEM Mini that have basically bigger, uh, you know, more professional features and they have more memory, then you could actually load in uh, video files and then you could even uh, basically trigger, trigger those. So let's say if you wanted to have a background but not a still background behind you but like a moving video. You could do that. Now you could also do that with Data Mini if you, let's say, got one of the, the Blackmagic Hyper decks. If you did that, then you would have the options here and you would actually see it. But right now, as you can see, it says it's, there's no Hyper deck detected. But that's where you'd have these, these features. And then that would act actually as, your, as, as basically another media player. So you would have more than one media player. And then those could actually be, again, still graphics or video that plays or loops over and over and you can control that then using up here. Again, I don't have the HyperDeck, so I, can't, I don't have that functionality. And by the way, that's also how you could enable to have, for example, like let's say an animated lower thirds graphic, right? Uh, because right now, like, like you saw, I can only have these little bumpers in there, but they're still images. So you, by attaching a HyperDeck and then loading in, let's say a little video clip that's looped with an alpha in it, you could then put that over your video and it would be you know actually moving and all that stuff so uh anyways that's that's one of the other things that, that you you'll be able to do if you get the hypertech and then when you have when you go to output here you can do the thing you have the different options which are as you'll notice this one is uh is basically not enabled because you you would have to for example install the black magic uh design desktop video then you can actually record that uh or uh, if you got um the Blackmagic uh, ATEM Mini Pro, the new one that has the recording capability, then in here in the output, you would actually have a recording tab. You're going to actually go in there, you could you know, adjust your recording settings and all that stuff, and you could trigger the recording on and after. Um, and now another thing you'll notice here is, for example, you have this thing called Capture Still. What is this? Well, that's actually for, you can capture, let's say, something that's happening here, and we, we, we know that basically that's what happening right there or going as a video source through your ATEM Mini. So let's say in this case, I'm going to look at the camera, I'm going to give a big cheesy smile, and I'm going to click there, Capture Still. Now when I go to my media, you'll notice in my uh, uh, here, uh, Capture basically 6, or my, you know, my fourth basically here window, that's what I have there. So if I put this now, I can be, for example, now talking, but I can always cut to a still, which is just going to be that still of me smiling, as you can notice. So, so those are the kind of things that you can do. So, uh, again, that's that's how you know one of the ways of loading kind of these extra images in there, and that's by by going to the output and, and capturing one of the stills. And then time code generator. That's actually something really cool that is enabled with the latest kind of the firmware with the ATEM Mini, and also if you upgrade your Blackmagic cameras. Now, this camera I'm using is the Ursa Mini Pro, so that doesn't work with it, but uh, simply because uh, you know this doesn't accept a USB uh, SDI connection, so I actually have an adapter that changes the SDI out to HDMI. But uh, if you have, like in here, I have two of the Blackmagic packet cameras. I have the 6K and uh, the 4K camera. They're connecting via the HDMI, so they're sending the HDMI signal to the ATEM Mini, while at the same time the ATEM Mini sends basically a video signal back to the camera. So 
I can actually basically time code jam both of these cameras so they are uh, so if I was let's say just shooting on these two Blackmagic Pocket cameras I could actually have identical time code on both of them that's perfectly synced and that's really cool because then I can be recording on both cameras and and you know let's say doing my live switching here or just maybe just recording on them and then later on I can then in my editing software go in there and I can tweak it and I can basically you know do my edit all over again and it'll actually you know let's see load in my my raw files but I can also sync those two or three or four cameras depending how many you have connected perfectly because again they are they're all jammed to the same time code so that, that that's a really really cool feature the fact that it's that that, that the time code generator is built in uh, now like I said the next to your page is the media page which I kind of showed you guys you load in your graphics you can hear audio page so this is where you're going to be doing all of your kind of audio settings so in here you'll notice that I have again three cameras so my A camera is the Ursa Mini Pro and um, or actually no this is the packet uh, 4k camera and this is just the audio that's basically coming off of the camera so it's not very good audio but if I wanted to I could uh, enable it so yeah turn it on so I'm going to turn that audio and turn off here my audio the, from the good camera and this is how I sound right now so probably sound pretty horrible <laughs> and that's because it's just using the built-in audio from that camera I can also go and enable the audio from my other camera which is the pocket 6k and again probably it's going to sound horrible because it's you know it's that built-in microphone, microphone. or, in, or this in this case I'm going to enable the audio from my Ursa Mini Pro uh, because it has that, that uh, you know XLR microphone here connected uh, but that's how you can kind of do this and again like I showed you before you can also do that here by switching the, the you know turning on and off the different audio inputs now guess what you can also adjust the volume so let's say right now my camera 3 uh, I'm going to be adjusting let's say I want to adjust my the volume up here so you can see right now it's set at 0 dB but I can go up and I can do that by clicking here or I can go down by again by clicking it on the ATEM Mini and if you want to have really fine-tuned kind of control then you can do it by doing the slider here I can adjust the, the audio basically levels of, up here oh yeah you can for example you can do your panning left and right so you can go from one channel to the thing right now you see that it's even though it's one microphone obviously it's outputting to both left and right channels but you can go for example on just the left channel right now or the right channel and this is basically how it sounds so I can do that all that panning all that kind of stuff uh, I can also go here actually that's kind of actually some kind of something really cool you can you have like these things that are also built in into the DaVinci Resolve uh, you know video editing software but you can enable up here like let's see uh, different bands and you can adjust you know the EQ uh, you know and again it will do all of these things and it will process your audio in real time uh, you can you know load in uh, here so right now actually let me turn this off uh, you can load in for example dynamics you can have a compressor and things like that again I'm not going to be playing around with this right now because this, this is basically the same stuff that you would do in, in a DaVinci Resolve so pretty much all the same settings but the cool thing is that you can do it here in real time while you're streaming you can adjust all of that and adjust all your different audios uh, settings and then obviously you have your main here uh, here uh, basically the, the volume and all that stuff uh, for the input so those are the kind of cool things uh, and it and I also like it because it's like I said it's like an advanced kind of a thing you, you can adjust the headphone level like all kinds of stuff like this which in this case you see it's grayed out why because the ATEM mini doesn't have headphone uh, output uh, so in my case for example I would be listening to my headphone uh, out uh, out of my monitor here because that one does have the, the headphone out so if you wanted to monitor audio you could do it that way and then the the last tab here which is really cool and again this is something that now is enabled with because of the the latest update for the ATEM mini but also for the pocket cameras is that you can now control these cameras so let's say if I were to switch to let's see this camera uh, as you notice right now it's uh, let's see focused on this but if I wanted to uh, and, and you'll notice that when I switch there it actually shows me even like which camera you know, now I'm in camera two going back to camera one it shows me which camera that I'm on uh, you know at that given moment and it here gives me uh, for example different functionality so here on the bottom is your focus control so I could for example even like let's say if I wanted to focus on my hand I could whatever is going to be in the center if I click this as you get out of focus you know it's going to do that really bad job of focusing but if you let's say if this camera was not live and somebody was operating they could click that just to make sure that 
the, that camera is going to be in focus before you switch, right? But let's say right now it's you know focused here on my hand, but let's say I want to focus back to the the ATEM Mini here, so I can do that by actually rocking this thing. So I can pull the the focus as you can see, and it's very accurate actually. I can go as you can see here, back to my hand, the focus, and then here back to the ATEM Mini or Gao maybe even here to the keyboard, and then back to the ATEM Mini. And I'm doing this just by sliding here the the focus thing. Uh, you can also adjust here. Uh, you, you can adjust your here iris. You can see I'm stepping it down. Uh, you can also adjust your zoom. If that's only going to obviously work if you had a, a a lens that has a powered zoom. In this case, I don't have one, but if you had that, then you could zoom in and out. So it's really cool because again, whoever is doing your live video switching and all that stuff can also control your cameras at the same time. Or for example, you can also have one person, let's say, doing the video switching while another person can operate all the different cameras just using the ATEM software uh, here. So it's really cool. Now, aside from doing obviously the like adjusting the exposure, you have here your DB. So that's basically gonna be uh, your your um, your ISO basically. So you can adjust your ISO so you can make it you know, a lot brighter and all that stuff. So if I can switch here. You'll notice that it's it's going brighter, darker here. If I go back down, so I can adjust that. I can adjust here my shutter speed or shutter. Yeah, in this case, shutter speed. I don't know why they didn't do it shutter angle because I prefer that. But anyway, shutter speed. So I can adjust it. All right, I'm going to go to 160th, and um, and then you can adjust your your temperature, your Kelvin. But another thing you can do is you can uh, actually adjust here. If you pull this, to just adjust your your iris. And then your your here uh, overall here gamma, so I can kind of make it washed out and all that stuff. In this case, I want to here I'm going to reset this and do reset all. And then here you can adjust your overall color. So let's say if I want to take that video source, make it kind of bluish or add a green tint or whatever, I can do that just by moving this wheel. And again, I know I know what you're thinking; it looks horrible, but uh, again. Probably you wouldn't be doing these crazy adjustments. You're gonna go in there, kind of tweak. Let's say if you have different cameras and they all look slightly different, maybe or because of the lighting or something, you can kind of match them this way easily uh, using, you know, basically these tools. The cool thing is that you can also expand it, so then it kind of hides the other things, and you, can, you will have here basically then more advanced controls, which is, which these are basically controls that you would have again in DaVinci Resolve. So I can adjust, like if I wanted to do, I don't know, kind of a teal and orange. Let's say look. I can quickly add a little bit of this kind of a teal, kind of blue in the shadows, a little bit there in the gamma, which is the midtones, let's say like that, and in the gain, add even a little bit of like this yellow look. And let's say, you know, I like this kind of a look, right? I, I, I created, and you can adjust the contrast, right? You know, things like that, uh, the, the hue, I can adjust it, uh, what else, you know, saturation, all that stuff. So let's say, I want to make it very saturated, or maybe let's say like slightly less saturated, uh, let's say somewhere there. So you, you can adjust all these things, and uh, now what you can do also is you can go in here, you can go copy, and I can go now, let's say, to one of my other cameras. So let's say if I switch to this camera here to the side, which is the Packet 6K. Well, you'll notice that if I go back to this angle, you know, the colors completely don't match. But let's say I like the color grade that I did there. So now I can go and apply actually that same color grade from the other camera to here by again going in here expanding this and i can go and paste and once i do that you'll notice that now my packet 6k has the same look as the packet 4k so it has that same kind of color treatment that, that i did with that one and then you know if you wanted to you can still go in and tweak it further and all that stuff so that's the kind of cool thing and then again even with the packet 6k by the way i know some people were wondering online can you adjust the, 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 the Canon lenses? It depends on the Canon lens, right? Obviously, or the Canon EF mount lens. If you have a lens that, uh, that let's say, doesn't have the, um, uh, you know, again, does, it doesn't have powered zoom, or it doesn't have, you know, let's say, uh, out of focus capability, then you wouldn't be able to adjust a lot of the things. But you can still adjust, for example, the, the, the iris. I can open it up, close it. Uh, you can, for example, adjust the, the you know, the, the Calvin, all that stuff. And yes, you can also adjust the focus, so I can make it go in and out of focus. So right now it's a pretty wide angle, so yeah, I think there should be good. So I'll just kind of leave it there. And um, yeah, th that's some of the, the, the really cool stuff that I think, again, I, I, I thought it's worthwhile showing you guys, you know, basically what you get by not just using the ATEM Mini like you see up here, but by actually using the ATEM software control 
you have all of these other functionalities that you wouldn't otherwise get with with just Atem Mini. So definitely, sometimes it's it'd be I think it'd be convenient for you to hook up or connect this to to laptop. And I think most cases you probably are going to be doing this because you're probably going to be using this for live streaming or maybe recording the live signal to to your laptop. And and uh, you know and then like I said, this way you 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 can do that. But you can also while sending the video signal, you can also Control the different things, including control the different cameras that are connected uh, to your ATEM minis, which, which is really, really, really cool. Now, there are a few things that I found out after I did the update <laughs> with the cameras and the ATEM mini that I'm not so happy about. And that's basically the fact that now, because the cameras are recognized as kind of these live switching cameras, it basically takes the ATEM mini takes control over them and it changes a lot of the settings in your cameras and you cannot change them basically. So you cannot record in some of the settings that you might want to record. So for example, the first thing is, uh, you know, while you're doing the live switching, you can be recording on your different cameras, but keep in mind that uh, at that point, the, 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 all the cameras are only going to be able to record in RAW. All the other functionalities basically turn off. So that's kind of one thing that sucks. Next thing is, that it switches to 60 frames per second because that's what the Atom Mini kind of operates in. So 60 frames frames per second. On the Pocket 4K is not so bad because you you, you know you, the camera basically can still go and record in 60 frames per second in 4K and it can record in all these other formats and different resolutions. On the Pocket 6K though, the second you switch to uh, 4K uh, or 60 frames per second basically you uh, you don't have the capability to shoot in full or record the full 6K because the camera is not able to record 6K at 60 frames per second. So I don't know why they did that because I would still want to be able to, let's say, record the, the real 6K signal. So if I want to do, again, if I want to maybe do some live switching, but at the same time have the, all that original footage from the cameras so I can do an, an alternate edit later on, it would be nice to have the full 6K signal. Not only that, but uh, if it switches it to only 12 of the other, uh, I think, resolutions, or just three actually, including the anamorphic. But on, otherwise, only two other resolutions, which are 17 by 9 aspect ratio. And that's why I don't know if you guys saw, but when I was switching on the different angles, or let's see, if I were to switch right now, you'll notice that it's the top and bottom has these little black bars. And that's because, again, it's it's 17 by 9 uh, you know, if, aspect ratio. That, so that really sucks. And I can't change that. Why? Because the camera, basically, the only way you can shoot in... in uh, uh, and, and, and basically 1080 or basically 16 by 9 aspect ratio is if I were to shoot in full 6K basically resolution and I can't switch to that and I can't even switch to the 1080p like it just won't let me do it so that's the kind of thing that I wish that, that they, had, they had not limited so they, if they would still allow me to switch like let's say if I wanted to you know do a, I don't know do a live stream or record to one of these different cameras and even record to an external recorder, but do it on 24 frames per second. It would be nice to have that option to be able to switch that. And if, unless you guys find, figured out a way of to do it, uh, because I have not found these settings anywhere and I looked everywhere, uh, then, then, but if you have found it, maybe I'm missing something, then let me know. But uh, I'm guessing because it's like a just a, you know, the latest update they released, I'm guessing uh, hopefully they'll be listening to people like me complaining about this and they'll, they'll enable those kind of basically more control over that because it would be nice for me to have these cameras you know all connected to my ATEM Mini so that I can switch and I can like even sometimes if I'm just doing like let's say a multicam recording and I'm not necessarily streaming or anything like that but I just it's nice to have the ATEM Mini then to kind of be able to like quickly switch and I can see on the monitor here how I look on one camera the second camera second, no, another camera but uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to use that now because the second I connect it, like I said, to the ATEM Mini, it's gonna go switch it to raw only, 60 frames per second, and all that stuff, and that really then limits the the the, the, the cameras. So, so that, that that's that's one thing that I, that is I'm kind of disappointed. Now another thing is with the ATEM Mini Pro, you have the functionality to hit record, like I said, record, uh, you know, there but records to another, like, like a USB drive or something. But you can also trigger all the cameras they have connected so that they, you know, and you can basically start and stop them using this. Well, you can't do that with the ATEM Mini, basically the regular one. And I don't know why, because they could have just added that functionality. I know that they probably basically just graded out, but I wish they would add that because that would be like a small little thing that, that you know, like here in the, in the switcher, 
if I could just go to the output and in there, you know, and like they actually added the little record setting basically menu that you get when you connect the ATEM Mini Pro. If they, if they actually did that, then that would be great because then I could actually go in here and, you know, basically trigger all of my cameras and record all of my cameras at the same time. So, so that would be a nice functionality, which again does not exist. So, so those are the sort of the, the, my two little complaints or, or wishes. Hopefully, somebody Black Magic listens. But otherwise, yeah, a lot of cool things coming with these new updates. Now, you know, again, and just overall cool tools that Black Magic has created, where there's these awesome different cameras, including the the video switcher and things like that. So, uh, if you guys are looking for something like that, as always, follow the links in the description. Uh, you'll help me out by, by using those when you're making any purchases. Um, and at the same time, if you guys want any other information or you want to see some of my other posts and things like that, as always, you'll find all of that and a lot more on my website at tomatosfilms.com. And it's also where you can subscribe to my newsletter so you can stay up to date. Uh, anyways, once again, my name is Tom Antos, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.